Hello there, good to see you. Um, first of all, thank you for your prayers. Um, Jackie um, got a test for COVID-19 primarily because her mum and dad had um, tested positive and she had been to see them on Saturday, last Saturday. So she's clear. And uh, that's obviously something uh, I want to give thanks for. Uh, but probably more significantly, I know folks um, have said, and for that I'm thankful, um, they've been praying for Jackie's mum and dad. So please keep on. Um, the word today is simply that they're doing not too badly. Uh, not feeling 100%, <coughs> but equally not too bad. So thank you very much. There is a recurring question with regard to things in this world that Christians will often ask. Will I have my pet in heaven? Will I see the people I love in heaven? Will, I, will we recognize people? Um, Will we? Well, the, the thing that the, the thing you usually get in Revelation, you know, there'll be no more pain. There's no more tears. Um, it's it tends to be heaven's referred to by what's not there. And one of the things you have to recognise, even just reflecting on on what we've been doing the last few days, there is no communion in heaven, in the sense <clears throat> there is no act of remembrance with bread and with wine because of what we said right at the beginning it is a commemorative meal it is there as a kind of a de memoir it's there to bring us back again and again and again to the reality of Jesus and so we eat the bread and we drink the wine we take the bread and we take the wine um, as a substitute. Um, in other words, we're remembering Jesus. You don't need to remember Jesus when you're in heaven because you're with him. So in a, almost in a kind of back to front way, communion amidst being commemorative, covenantal, community-orientated, communal, and um, contemporary. Communion points towards the, the coming times, as in the time when we will be with God in heaven. And it points towards it specifically because we will no longer need to eat bread and wine to commune with Jesus. You will commune with Jesus because you're with him directly. You're in his presence. You're worshipping him. You're giving thanks for him. And we will do in his presence what we do at a communion. And so in that sense, um, communion stops in this world. Just when you reflect on it and think about it, you realise it has to. Because it's there as an act of commemoration. You don't need to commemorate Jesus when you spend every living moment in eternity with him, praising him and honouring him. The fact remains, um, there are various kind of pointers in scripture that would... Um, make you think and reflect when Jesus um, has the uh, calls the disciples in when they're fishing and he is in his resurrection body he wants to prove to them to them that he's not a ghost therefore he eats a piece scripture says of broiled fish the fact is generally speaking our spiritual bodies would be thought of as not needing nourishment in the way our physical bodies do. 
I suppose the the um, events of what I've just referred to when Jesus eats the boiled fish would point to an opposite conclusion. But generally, I think folks would interpret a resurrection body, a spiritual body, meaning you no longer need to be sustained by your meat and two veg because you are no longer what you were. You were, Romans 15, so imperishable and raised imperishable. And so in that sense, um, you have become sustained and nourished by the presence of Christ in your life in eternity. So you don't have communion to remember him. You remember him all the time. But what it does mean in, is in this world, in this time, communion points towards the date of his own demise. We have communion to remember that one day we won't need to. One day we will be with him forever. So in that sense, although you don't have communion in heaven, you have Jesus, his body and his blood. You have him in his spiritual body, in his resurrection body. They are sustaining us for all eternity. So in that sense, it points towards the fact that one day communion, in, as far as we do in this world, won't be required. It points backwards. But communion also points forwards. When you come to communion this coming Sunday, recognise the truth. You will not always need communion. You will not always need to be reminded of Christ. You will not um, be thinking of the covenant promised but not yet fulfilled. You will be with the promise, living its completion and its fulfillment. You will be the first fruit as Jesus is the beginning of the harvest. We are the people who will come and be with him forever. So it does point back. But it also points towards for our need of it today, this generation and this era, points to the, the fact, points to the reality that we need to re be reminded a day is coming when we won't need communion. Well, as far as Church of Scotland Kirk sessions and session clerks and elders are concerned, roll on that day because I know folks get a bit uptight when they've got to carry out the wee trays with all the wee glasses. The fact is, theologically reflect on that it points towards a day when our communion with God will be direct personal and eternal go with God because I know he goes with you not just today not just this week but for eternity Bye.